This is the plaintiff, Kenny Snell. He says he brought his 1997 Ford F-150 to the defendant's shop for an oil change. And when he left and drove it home, boom, oil was leaking out and two cylinders in his engine blew. It's the defendant's fault, and he's suing her for $5,000 for all he's now out. This is the defendant, Cynthia Parra. She says she changed the plaintiff's oil. Then a week later, he calls and blames her for blowing his engine. The truck is 20 years old, and she did nothing wrong and refuses to pay. She's accused of blowing an engine. All parties, please use your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff says he brought his truck to the defendant for an oil change. An hour later, the engine blew up. But the defendant says the truck is 20 years old for crying out loud, and she did nothing wrong with the oil change a week earlier. It's the case of blowing a gasket. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. Okay, Mr. Snell, you took your car to Dragon Brothers Automotive to get an oil change on what day? The date. Do you have the receipt? I have I have the receipt on my phone. I don't have it on my actual person. Okay. Ms. Para, do you, as the business person who's been sent here as a manager to represent, do you have a receipt about what day he had the oil change? I do not have that with me. I'm sorry. I, I do know that... It's like that the one and only we, thing that you would need to have. How is it you don't have that? Well, it was sent to the owner and... As he let me see it, but he didn't let me keep it. So, but he wanted well, me to but do this. But you're in court. You're getting sued. How could? What paperwork do you have? Nothing. Nothing. I okay, Mr. Snell, you. tell me what happened. Yes, ma'am. So I pull up to get an oil change, and there's customers. They're they're knocking customers out. Of course, it's busy. So I'm guessing they're trying to meet a quota of, or or whatever. But anyways, I pull in and get an oil change. Take about an hour. And I pay the guy. Maybe they're just the good at what they do, so they had a lot of people going there to get it done. Maybe that's what it was. May All right, maybe. so it's busy. You pay the guy. You don't remember what day that was. You don't have a, the receipt either. Uh, you pay $45 plus a $5 tip, and then what happens? And then I go pick up my son, and once I hit the highway, I immediately, I immediately realized, like, something's off. And I was like, what's going on? And my engine... Bam, like dead. It was like, like came out of nowhere, a boom. And I'm like, did somebody just shoot at me? What's going on? And so I called the, the person that did my oil change. And I'm like, hey, I just got an oil change. And um, my, my engine just blew up. You know, I, I'm literally on the highway right now. Me and my son are on the side of the highway, stranded. You know, I don't, I don't have a way to, to get off the side of the highway. I have to call my wife. She's at work. So I called her. And she comes and rescued me after like about an hour um, due to What'd her you do getting with the off car? of work. Did you get um, it towed? What'd you right, do with it? Yes, ma'am. I did get it towed to a mechanic, to my mechanic. And he told me that that it looks like they was, they was trying to sabotage me. That's his word. So I was like, nah, there's no way. So I take it to okay. Crane Ford to get a diagnosis. And they're telling me that it looks like they they didn't even try to put your oil your oil plug back in. I can literally take it out with my hand. That's what the guy told me. I can literally take it out with my hand. Welcome back to the People's Court. The plaintiff wants a new engine from the defendant because he says she forgot to put the oil plug in uh, when she did the oil change. But the defendant is saying the guy's just trying to blame her because his 20-year-old truck conked out. Let's go back into the courtroom. Do you have anything that you're saying in writing so that you can prove it to me? Do you have anything that you're saying in writing? Or is that just you talking? Well, I, well, I had the diagnosis. I had the diagnosis. Yes, ma'am. All right. So now you do have something from Crane Automotive that says multi-point vehicle inspection. And in it, it says the customer states he took the truck to get an oil change at a quick lube shop. And now the engine has issues starting and will not want to crank. Doesn't say anything about the car yes, blowing up. Doesn't say anything about a big bang. Doesn't say that you were just leaving the place. I'll tell you what it really doesn't say. It doesn't say that anything that's happening now is the fault of the oil change. It doesn't say at all what you're saying. You have to say what you're saying to get them to pay for a new engine, 
But how are you going to prove it? Because you're the plaintiff, and when you come into court, you have the burden of proving your case. You have to be able to prove to me that, in fact, your theory is correct. And you are not a car guy. You're not, you're not a car expert. These guys are. This is what I would expect them to be saying here. It's done every day. People come and they sue after some kind of work and say the work was, you know, th the accident that happened or what went wrong was as a result of the work. And they have the, the next mechanic uh, in an affidavit or somewhere saying, hey, this was really faulty workmanship. I mean, it's done every day. It can be proven easily. But you're not proving it. And my verdict in this case is for the defendant. Thank you, Judge. Kenny Snell, Kenny, let me ask you, I know you're disappointed in this. What do you have to say about it? I guess I should have had more proof, man. I guess I should have had more evidence. What can I say? You're lucky, Ms. Parra, because you came in without any paperwork. You, you couldn't even prove the date that he was in your shop. How do you feel right now? Well, I feel bad for him as well. Um, but that, like the judge says, that happens a lot. And without him bringing the vehicle to us to where we could have a look at it. So we don't know what really happened. Well, as I said, you, you should feel lucky because uh, neither one of you had the evidence you needed to prevail. So thank you very much. That'll do it for this very interesting case. Let's see what the judges have to say. In this instance, uh, there's a failure of proof when you don't have the expert testimony at hand when you go to court to demonstrate that somebody screwed up your car effectively, correct? Right. But so, I think he was just trying to pin it on the, you know, the oil, the oil change people. But you because... didn't even have the oil change invoice to say, well, I had this done at 2 o'clock and at 2.15 I was... I had a tow truck, nothing. Okay, Christian wants to know this. Hey, Harvey, our neighbor's kids are constantly climbing one of our big trees. Are we liable if the kid falls? Uh, the answer is probably not. It's not an attractive nuisance or anything like that. I would tell the kid's parents just so they're on notice. We'll see you next time.